Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Lips Reptiles. And I've got two of my newest animals here with me uh, that I just can't wait to show you. Now you probably saw us already run a whole thing on these and find out what sex they are. Well, I brought home a male and female. And you can probably guess that's my long-term reasoning why that is, uh, but not today. So today we're going to share with you how we're going to be feeding these guys. Now I already started a little bit before I got this going, so I already have had one. We are going to feed them fairly heavy. We want to put some weight on them and some size, and then we'll end up having to get them set up for breeding. So, uh, we're going to probably be feeding them at least once to twice a week with a pretty heavy meal each time. By a heavy meal, I don't mean a big meal. I mean several smaller bites. So let's feed these Gila monsters. We have a male here and a female here. Uh, we got this whole bag of rat. They're not going to eat all this in a setting. This will be for a couple feeds. These are all pre-killed, gassed off rodents from uh, our shop, Manhattan Reptile World. If you are in Manhattan and you need rodents. Hey, don't you come out of there. So what we'll simply do is take this one and tow the mail. Come here. Come get it. Come on. Come on. Want that? Just like that. Now you look, the female's coming. I don't want them fighting over food. So I need to go ahead and get her started on something too. If we can do it head first, then they'll have a much easier time swallowing that. You want this girly? Come on, baby girl. Come get it. Arr. So what they'll kind of do is they'll kind of work that with their head. Now I'm also here to make sure they don't fall out. I do have a hook if I need to prop this guy up. He's not very smart. <laughs> He is really cool though. I wouldn't mess with them while they were eating, obviously. But you can kind of see how the strong their jaws are and how big they work. We're going to give them each one more rodent and then that will be it. That's all you get. Just one more piece. Well, this little piggy here, she finishes her food a little faster. You ready for your third? Want one more? Mmm, nom nom nom. I thought you did. Oh, uh, so this guy's getting a bigger rodents because he has a bigger, uh, it's a bigger Gila. So I'll give him one more here in a second. And actually I'll probably save that for Patreon and kind of talk to them a little bit about these guys while we feed them. As you can see here in our cage, this litter dam is pretty tall, pretty large, so there's a lot of deep litter there. I did remove one of the hides to because she was hidden back there for feed purposes, but there is running a heat back here for our setup, and it's not really going to get anything over about 90 degrees on the ground. You can see the thermostat probe hanging there, and it is set to shut off at about right about 90, so it'll turn off right there and let it cool down a little bit. Of course, it'll be much cooler over here. You'd say, you know, we, we don't, you'd say they're in a desert. Wouldn't you want to run them a little hotter? Well, not really. They spend a lot of time digging down in. That's why this is so deep, uh, why we had a lot of moisture early on. They like a good humid burrow. Um, the point of the bull hides is to be able to, to make those very humid and keep the humidity in there for these guys. So we'll give a little tail of the stick now. Nom, 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 nom. So there is a method to our madness in what we're doing in hopes to give them a very, very good home. Hey, do not fall off of there. No, buddy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Stay back. There you go. So uh, that is our plan and why we have so much substrate, why we're using an over-the-top heat system. And we'll probably end up adjusting our temperatures as we go. If we find this still to be a little bit too warm, we can always dial it back. Uh, we will probably have to do some major temperature adjustments when it comes time to breed. As you can see, this male is starting to shed. So he's just starting to peel it there. He'll peel it all down his back. He should be able to handle that through digging on his own. If not, we can also help with that. Again, Jeff's running the camera today because, well, Kurt's got a sick wife. So Jeff, do you have any questions for me? Life expectancy. So these guys can do a good 30 years, believe it or not. And so they've got some age to them already. But, I mean, I'm not exactly sure what their age is. I know we've had them at our shop for probably seven or eight years. So I would bet these guys are at least probably ten years old at this point. Uh, maybe not quite that old. I'm not sure. I have to remember when we got them. But uh, they can do 30 years. So they've still got a lot of good life left. You're fine, bud. So we'll be able to work with them for quite a while. Anything else? Being one of the uh, few... Uh, venomous lizards. Do you know what the uh, venom does if you get bit by one? 
So their Venom is really kind of cool. So they did not develop Venom as... Okay, you guys are just going to make this difficult. So watch this. Yeah, no way I'll keep putting it back in there for a minute. So they developed their Venom. And I know it's not all the way closed, guys. We're going to be back in there in a minute. They didn't develop it for offense. They don't use it to eat. It's, they overpower their prey. They eat smaller prey like what we're feeding them, things like that. They're not going to use it to like subdue a prey item like a rattlesnake would. Their Venom was solely developed for defense. So when something does eat one of these and it bites them in the process and holds on, it learns a very valuable lesson if it doesn't die from it. So things start to learn not to bite those. Don't bite each other. Come on now. That's also why they have very, very thick skin. Their skin is like armor plating. So when lizards breathe, they tend to bite. These things will come every now and then like, with each other. These two aren't too bad. Unless we get into a fight over something right now. They're checking for food is what they're doing. They're smelling food off each other's lips. Uh, <laughs> come on, guys. You can't eat each other. And then what they'll end up doing is that protects them from each other's bite. So, their venom is a hemotoxin, I do believe. It causes massive, massive, massive amounts of pain. Uh, it also can cause some issues with the heart. So it is a serious bite. It is something you should take seriously. Sometimes I think people treat these a little too lax because of that. You know, but there's been no recorded death. So that kind of puts them in this, oh, they're not that big of a deal realm. I don't want to be bit by one of these. It's really not half my priority list, so you still handle them with care. You know, uh, <laughs> it's so cute, though. So that's kind of how the, my thoughts on the Venom. Anything else you want to ask? That was it. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. This is a really good shot. I'm going to open this back up a little bit of the heads, if you can get that, or you can see how much bigger that male's head is in the females and the whole different shape. So there's not a huge difference in size of these lizards, but there is on the head. So very, very telltale sign of male to female. One of the reasons we think that is a male and that is a female, plus the uh, sonogram helped to confirm some of that. Yeah, you're going to try to fall out again, so I'm going to close that back up on you. Good boy. All right, guys, thanks for watching. So we're going to switch over to Patreon and do this last feed uh, for those guys there, and we will see you all next time.